Because in India, there is no concept of pocket money. There is no concept of earning. It's always on demand that I'll go up to my parent, I'll ask for 200 bucks and I'll get it. Right? And uh, and we realize that, okay, this is, uh, this is why, because they don't experience financial independence, by the time you reach college, uh, you are not thinking beyond survival. Survival is the biggest question and you're like, okay, if I don't have a job at hand, how am I going to earn? How am I going to survive, right? So they start figuring, figuring out, okay, this is a company that's coming to the campus. So I'll probably sit, give this test, clear this interview and I'll earn this much. So that's my financial independence. So yeah, the, those were the discussions we were having. And we realized uh, like kids are so much dependent on the parents in India that if a parent tells them, okay, you can't buy a 20,000 phone, you'll just buy a 17,000 phone. Um, I can't argue, right? I'll just have to accept it. I don't know where, like where those 3000 bucks would make a difference in a year long financials for my family. Probably if I get my own pocket money, I'll cut down my expenses on food ordering or shopping and save 3000 bucks. It's not a big deal, right? Um, but I don't get to make that decision. I don't get to make those sacrifices. I don't get to fight for what I really want. Um, so inherently, uh, kids become handicapped in taking the right decisions, taking control uh, in their own choices in life. Um, so yeah, like having that financial independence, freedom, financial literacy was completely missing in India. And I'm not even talking about literacy to the point where what's a credit card score and what's your credit score, what's how to invest, how to save taxes. That's too far off. Today we have with us Sambhav Jain, founder of FAMPAY. Sambhav, along with his co-founder Kush Taneja, launched FAMPAY in 2019. FAMPAY is a fintech solution that helps children below the age of 18 assert their own financial independence via an app that's designed just for them. FAMPAY also has a numberless card which protects their identity and protects them from theft. The app gives children the power to do online transactions without having to ask their parents to input banking details or wait them to give them OTPs. With 1.35 million users, FAMPAY is one of the biggest fintech companies dominating the teenage finance segment in India. Welcome, Sambhav. Uh, thank you so much, Adha. Thank you so much for the warm welcome and great to be here. Yeah. Sambhav would love to learn uh, how did you get the insight to solve this problem? So again, uh, we did not actually uh stumble upon this problem it was uh it was quite quite a journey so i'll just share the brief story so uh both me and kush uh, we graduated out of it Roorkee, uh in 2019 and we started building pampe in our final semester when we were still in college right um so we both know each other since first year of college we've been friends for four years and uh, uh throughout college we've worked on uh different products together, different things together uh, within campus. And uh, we used to do just different uh, internships, right, uh, in different startups. So while we were interning from different startups in different roles from product to marketing to business operations, um, we were very clear that, okay, startup is the space where we want to be. This is this is super exciting. Like you can have great impact um, in uh, you you can leverage technology to create like huge impact and we were fascinated by the kind of so my first internship was at Trivigo and it was just a two three year old organization back then and it was already competing with the likes of the traditional players who have been in the industry for decades right um, so yeah so so we were quite fascinated with that um, so coming to the final year um, I want to I wanted to join an early stage startup with a three four member team. Uh, where I can play more of a uh, more of a multiple hats uh, role, right? And Kush was like, I want to start something of my own. And uh, so both of us um, didn't actively uh, pursue placements in the campus. Um, and uh, yeah, we had a lot of time uh, because we were not preparing for placements. So, uh, and we used to stay in the same hostel, same floor, just two rooms apart. So we just used to go to each other he used to come up with two ideas every day i used to go with two startups just to have a discussion on how's this startup how's this idea how do you like the product 
and uh, yeah like a few days later i started going with two problems every day that okay what do you think about this and we used to just brainstorm on different uh, problems different startups and it was always a very interesting discussion um so th- so in that period we were uh, helping a bunch of our friends through the placements right um through the interviews through the tests and all of that so um a lot of our friends like who did not code for three years they started coding and uh, we when we asked them that okay uh bro we know that you don't like coding why are you coding um so they were like okay if i get this job i'm going to earn this much and my life is going to be settled right that's the typical response we uh used to get and uh, like both me and kush couldn't understand how is your life getting settled if you're not looking at uh what's the company you're going to work in what's the product what the people like what's your work profile right uh, like people were ready to go uh, in northeastern states in the mines if the company is paying good um, right um, so we we couldn't understand like what's the how, how is that decision making uh, uh, structured in the minds of students um, and we came to a discussion where we were like people are just looking at money as one factor while making the decision for the job and not all the other factors though it's a very important decision um that you're going to spend on next few years of your life this is going to be starting point of your career the job but they were just looking at money and for us it was like money is becoming the bottleneck to take the right decision because if you re- remove money from the equation right the answer on what they would want to do or probably what they would be doing would be very different um so we were just having casual discussions around that that why do people look at money this way and um, we, we we were discussing i remember us discussing that in india since a childhood no one is comfortable about talking about money to the kids right schools don't teach you about money banks don't teach you parents don't really talk about money very openly so finance is always considered as a very serious subject that no one talks about whereas if you look at western countries there are concepts of pocket money there are concepts of working early on to earn for yourself maybe it can be just working at a uh, mcdonalds right um, but you know that okay you, I, i can work and i can earn this much and by earning this much i can earn this lifestyle in which i can party this much shop this much travel this much right um so they gain their financial independence early on and they start taking their own decisions and life is not about survival anymore they know that they can survive and now they have to figure out what they want to do in life whereas in india there is no concept of pocket money there is no concept of earning it's always on demand that i'll go up to my parent i'll ask for 200 bucks and i'll get it right and uh, and we realize that okay this is uh, this is why because they don't experience financial independence by the time you reach college uh, you are not thinking beyond survival survival is the biggest question and you're like okay if i don't have a job at hand how am i going to earn how am i going to survive right so they start figuring figuring out okay this is a company that's coming to the campus so i'll probably sit give this test clear this interview and i'll earn this much so that's my financial independence so yeah the, those were the discussions we were having and we realized uh, like kids are so much dependent on the parents in india that if a parent tells them okay you can't buy a 20000 phone you'll just buy a uh, 17000 phone um i can't argue right i'll just have to accept it i don't know where, like where those 3000 bucks would make a difference in a year long financials for my family probably if i get my own pocket money i'll cut down my expenses on food ordering or shopping and save 3000 bucks it's not a big deal right um but i don't get to make that decision i don't get to make those sacrifices i don't get to fight for what i really want um so inherently uh, kids become handicapped in taking the right decisions taking control uh, in their own choices in life um so yeah like having that financial independence freedom financial literacy was completely missing in india and i'm not even talking about literacy to the point where what's a credit card score and what's your credit score what's how to invest how to save taxes that's too far off uh, they don't even know how to look at money what's personal finance so like this is a big problem to solve that is how we like we were just passionate about solving this problem um for financial literacy independence and freedom 
um and we're like let's let's bring in the culture of pocket money to india let's build something where parents will send in pocket money kids can spend it through a card or something and we'll gamify the experience on the app through which we'll literate them financially on how to spend how to save how to budget etc right um so that was a thought and we had just one semester in front of us before we graduated so we moved to bangalore uh, because staying four years in rurki it's a, it's a it's it's a very small town we did not even know what's the situation in in the urban cities how are kids uh, spending and all of that so we came to bangalore um for some initial research um and we used to go to the malls and uh, we used to just meet kids there who were like playing in smash and all uh, gaming parlors and we just uh, asked them like do you have 10 minutes to chat we are students from iit and we are working on a project um they were happy to chat and that is where we got the golden insight like 90% of the kids we spoke to did not have bank accounts so all the kids that we spoke to they had smartphones they were using internet they were already spending on like swiggy flap flipkart amazon ola uber netflix everywhere but when we asked them how do you spend they are like we borrow cash from our parents we borrow our parents debit card or credit card whenever we are shopping online we have to borrow ot like we have to call them for otp right uh, these are the kind of problems kids told us we are like then uh, where do you keep your money they are like we don't keep any money we just like take 200 bucks every time we go out we keep 500 bucks in a secret pocket so there were very interesting uh, uh insights that we got in those conversations and we realized that this is the most tech savvy audience right who who trust digital first products and um who can actively use it really well but they don't have access to even making digital payments right because to upi was growing crazy in 2019 and to have a upi id you need to have a bank account to have a debit card you need to have a bank account you can't get a credit card below 18 and uh, if you look at india's population 40% of india's population is below 18 40% uh so it's like whenever we are talking about the next half billion users on the internet we often forget that majority of them are going to be minors right every year millions of teens will get their first smartphones um so we saw it as a big opportunity this was a it it was clearly a big untapped market nobody was focusing on it even if you look look today right every product is being built for adults um so so yeah that is when we were like okay this is bang on like but financial literacy and independence is too far off they don't even have access to financial tools right to digital payments to banking so let's build that and on top of it we'll build in features um to help them get to the financial literacy and independence so yeah that is the brief story on how we uh, thought of solving for financial literacy and independence and we got to know that there's no access to teens it's an untapped, untapped market and yeah that that is where we thought of building first payments app for them and on top we'll start building banking and all with fampay that is when the idea was born and we applied to y combinator while we were in our final semester through our hostel rooms so yeah that is where uh, journey began uh, and at what point did you realize you had a product market fit uh, after yc or before yc was it that no it was far far uh, it was it was quite long after that because uh, when we applied to yc we were not launched and we had a lot of things to figure out being first time entrepreneur still in college um, we had to figure out a lot of a lot of fintech guidelines right uh, how how do you go about the regulations how do you go about manufacturing a card how do you go about launching it or the kind of certifications and licenses you would need so it's it's a very regulated industry right it's not like a social app that you just code overnight and you can make make live we actually went live in august 2020 uh last year it's it's been almost a year and uh, we after we raised our seed round so we raised our seed round in um, in september 2019 we started building the team started building the product after that and uh, we were ready to go live in april actually um but that is when covid came in and uh, so we had to like just postpone the plans of launch so we went live in august and we we feel that we hit pmf end of december jan or early january this year so, yeah and when did sequa round happened after yc 
um sequoia round happened uh, just like around the demo day so yc has this uh, demo day uh, in three months right where all the investors gather uh, listen to the pitch of uh, all the uh, yc startups um so just before that you start having conversations i think vcs reach out to all the uh, yc startups beforehand and we were just having conversations with sequoia since two months um and we just closed the round before demo day it was a 4 million round i believe it was a 4.7 million round it was uh it was led by venture highway and sequoia okay and and you got in touch with venture highway parallelly because of yc so as i mentioned like most of the investors like reach out to yc startups just to have a conversation getting to know the founders early on see which companies are doing interesting things and can can you share more uh, one, and this is september 2019 right which you shared that this round happened of 4.7 million as september 2019 yeah we we announced it much later we we closed it in september but uh, we announced it in march 2020 and uh, yeah we we just didn't want to announce it back then we wanted to first build the product we had the capital we had the resources so yeah and when did elevation round happen like what what excited elevation to build a such a large round right yours is one of the largest series a in india of 38 million yeah so so, so what were your discussions if you can share with elevation with ravi adusumali uh, that gave him the insight that this can become really a large category um uh, so so actually elevation was the first vc we spoke we we ever spoke to so right after we went in like we got into yc um the very next day they reached out to us just to have a casual conversation and we've been in touch since since back then right um so we've been constantly chatting since two years they've been looking at the progress how we were building things how we ha- how we were approaching this market how we were very thoughtful about our branding our product and uh, um so we we were very comfortable since two years we were following each other's journey we used to chat regularly um and uh, once so so when we launched in august 2020 after launching in his first numberless card um we for the first 8 to 10 months we were actually growing 100% month on month right so by december it was it was uh, quite clear that okay this is uh, uh, we have hit pmf there's a certain pull um that we are able to grow so fast um at with so uh with very less marketing effort we were actually able to grow uh through through referrals through network effects through social uh elements um so yeah that is what gave them the confidence that okay this market has the right opportunity and um they really liked uh, our approach so most of the conversation was around how we are looking ahead um how why do we think there's opportunity in the market so definitely they were trying to pick our brain and uh, and whenever we have spoken to um elevation i think i think they feel that okay the the, the best part that, that they like is that we have the unfair advantage of being closer to our tg right so uh, if if there can be someone who can build for this tg they have to actually understand what they uh, go through right and how did you decide on the quantum size and uh, what was the month if you remember when elevation committed and what were the users back then when elevation committed um so when elevation committed it was back in march we had uh, just had a million plus uh, registered users on the platform uh so yeah and and on the quantum we were actually uh, not planning to raise uh, uh, such a big round um uh we were planning to relay, raise a little lesser close to a 25 to 30 uh million round but it just happened that uh when we started having conversations um it uh, everything that we were we were just chatting about the different numbers and how uh, even sequoia is existing investors uh were keen on uh participating uh in the round right so so yeah we just uh happened to have them both which actually increased uh, the round size great and what led to so much fi- viral growth of users between august and march were you acquiring these users through facebook instagram or were there organic channels that you built um so so no actually uh, 
we we started ads quite late uh, we were not advertising for the first uh, few months uh, most of the growth was coming organically through referrals and uh, our launch strategy was very focused on a community first approach um so what we were what we did was uh, we had a list of the top 200 schools in india and we uh, we found the five most popular kids in all of these schools and we got them onboarded um as as a kind of a influencers teen influencer or you can ca- call them brand ambassadors um and uh, it was one of the first i would say one of the first very unique school brand ambassador program and what's unique with school kids is that um like probably college students might not feel great about being a brand ambassador uh, for a company but but while you're in school because the exposure is so less it feels very unique that you're working closely with the brand right and we were very strategic on how we are uh, putting them out there it was not like okay you get us 10 downloads and you'll get 100 bucks no we were just like okay you are going to create a lot of content with us and uh, you're going to share feedback you we are going to listen to you you are like our brand advocates you are like our first uh, product uh, first users right we were taking feedback with them constantly and all of that so yeah uh, that is how we got the first 500 to 1000 users from the top 200 schools reaching out to them and these are the kids who are like uh, the head boys head girls and the performers in the schools right and when they started putting up posts on okay i have got my own card and when the most five popular kids in every school were suddenly talking about pampa and getting their own card and having a having a great uh, design of the card and unboxing experience definitely helped kids started to get fomo they were like okay even i want this card where did you get this card from so um so we had a very uh we were very strategic on we should not spend even a single penny until we find the first 1000 users who actually love the product right so um we used to uh if you if you go search uh, fanpay on youtube you'll find like a lot of videos created organically by users who are just unboxing the card and it's it's like they remember it like their first bicycle or phone right it's their first card in their life so they flaunt it they want to flaunt it in the stories they were creating boomerangs reels and unboxing videos so that was uh, that was how we went about launching the product and through the first uh, first 1000 community members b- being very close to them we got our first 5000 users like definitely we it was very easy to like expand in those networks like with every kid we used to easily get like four to five uh, other kids so we grew from 5000 to 10000 from there and that is when we started pulling different growth levels like we started adding referrals we experimented a lot then with referrals we grew from like 10000 to 25 30000 and that is when we were like let's do our first influencer campaign we got done my on board we did a campaign with them and after that i think uh, when when we reached our first for, for first 40 50000 consumers we did not do any advertising on facebook or instagram and after that we actually started with performance and you have a very uh, unique acquisition channel on discord communities can you tell about that yeah so the whole team actually tries to uh live life like a gen z and and like 60 70% of the team is actually gen z uh we are very young and uh, so we understand what teenagers want right um we we understand it very easily it's it's not difficult for us to understand whereas if you look at um so, so the, i i usually give this example so like in our times we used to get happy by asking for a remote control car to our parents but today kids will be like i want a green screen i want a podcast setup and i want to become a youtube influencer right the times have changed so much um so we keep those psyche in mind and we we uh we follow teenagers like what they're doing and discord is like the new gen z platform where most of the teenagers are super active uh most of the gamers streamers youtubers um they have their discord communities and it it only made sense to right out we were speaking to a few uh, of our users and uh, looking at the data we we got to know that okay a lot of uh, 
uh, a lot of our users are actually using discord for different things um so that is when we it it started with an experiment okay let's let's try building this um and let's see if, if this picks up but it has turned out to be really good um so it's it's turning out to be like the new way of support where kids definitely get to socialize talk about the product discuss different things we get to know what what they actually want how they are talking about the uh, product and it's very difficult to build that kind of community for adults because adults are busy in life right but teenagers have a lot of time they just want to speak to other friends make friends socialize so what we do is even when we get some queries on our social media channels we just send them the discord community link and we are like okay you can just join the community and ask your any questions here so kids just go to discord they ask like okay i'm stuck with kyc what should i do and other kids end up responding and solving those queries um so it's, it's a it's a very um it's a very fun community we do a lot of events games um we just do some movie nights where we are just streaming uh movies on sundays and a lot of kids just come on friendship day also uh we had a three movie kind of a marathon um so yeah it's it's a it's a great community and how many members you have on that community today um i think it's a uh, it's close to 10000 already um i am not updated with the last number but yeah and how was your journey from 50000 users to like currently 1.5 mil am i right the current number no it's it's so 1.5 mil was just in the last quarter it's it's uh, 2 million plus uh, wow. overall um the journey has been uh, has been great um as i mentioned it's it's about time uh that we started with those community initiatives we were growing with just invite only from being just an invite only app to then letting the users enter getting to 10000 opening referrals we experimented a lot on referrals like what is the right referral strategy that will work um so growing from there to like 25 30000 doing our first influencer campaign so like as we kept on progressing in the journey um like we we had to evolve ourselves and our growth strategy right um so so the journey has been incredible the first 8 to 10 months we were growing 100% month on month and every morning uh it's it was not whatsapp it was not instagram that we used to open like even when i was half asleep i just used to open and check out the number of users we have got uh overnight right every morning that was the first thing like most of the team members used to check like what's the volume of transactions what are the number of users um so um so yeah it's it's been uh, amazing we then started performance marketing we scaled our influencer uh marketing first we were only doing it on youtube then we also started on instagram so we kept on expanding our acquisition channels we also started uh, uh we were also doing bunch of things on the product right we also launched uh in january we launched a loyalty program um where we introduced our in app currency fam coins so for every transaction that the kids do they earn fam coins and uh, with fam coins it's not like just a digital currency that you get with a credit card or debit card that is just used to avail offers with with the coins you can do much more things like donation participate in different giveaways and contests we also conduct a lot of master classes uh, where we help kids to learn right so it's it's not kids don't look at it as a payments app or a banking app it's like a community actual community for them where they can just come to have fun socialize learn and do different things and, and what's the revenue model so currently we earn through uh, every sale of card so the physical card is not given for free and uh, we earn interchange on every card transaction so for every card transaction we earn so those are the two as of now but yeah we are working on some interesting things okay. for the next 12 months and if you can uh, tell you know in your early journey how were the traditional banks responding when you took the concept of fampay to them for partnership because you would have utilized an underlying underlying banking layer to build on top of it um yeah it was uh, it was challenging in the beginning i think for most of the fintech entrepreneurs especially first time entrepreneurs you would listen the same answer that they had to go to every bank they had to like struggle for 5 6 months just to get the right partnership just to get it through 
just to help the ba bank understand the vision what we're trying to build align them um so yeah the first uh, few months were quite difficult um because we were not just first time entrepreneurs but we were very young ourselves right we were just out of college so um and uh, I, like maybe the banking books are not really accustomed to uh, uh dealing with so young um founders so they were like okay the, they 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 used to consider us as kids okay these like these kids are wanting to build for kids and minors as a segment is not uh, was was very unta was very new and uh, none of the banks banks usually see a lot of opportunity in the adults market and uh, so it was difficult for us to make them understand that okay like nobody has been able to see the market in the teen market that is why we have the biggest opportunity because we see and we understand what we can build out of this so it was it was quite difficult uh, we were parallelly having conversations with multiple banks same conversation same pitch over and over again and uh, it's it's like there's so much hierarchy in the banks that every time you go to the next meeting there's two people new who have joined in and you have to give the whole context again right um so but yeah it was uh, it was fun got to learn a lot of things um how fintech works how partnerships works and how uh, what are the kind of different licenses you need how how does kyc work and uh, it 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 feels like uh, you've done a K phd on kyc uh, alone <laughs> uh, we have worked so much on that yeah yeah which was the first bank that got converted and agreed to partnership uh, it's idfc first bank and how much meetings it took you to to convert idfc first um i don't remember the number of meeting there but um it was it was close to 5 5 months 4 5 months and and today like idfc would be very we happy with the work. partnership yeah we we still uh, we still working with them and uh, it's it's uh, only we haven't gone to a multi bank partnership and how do you do it right you open a child account under a parent account it's a completely new account for a child with parent it's as a, a guardian it's not a bank account it's kind of a wallet it's a prepaid account so you come and kid completes the kyc the parent completes the kyc but the kid gets an independent account uh, where parents can load in money they can fund this account and the kid can start spending through their card and uh what what are the insights that you have got on this journey what are the expectations of finance different of under 18 versus those of college goers or versus those of who are early in jobs the market is very different so I, i a lot of people confuse millennials and gen z's right but gen z's are totally different uh, altogether uh, different generation because they haven't seen a world without internet so since childhood they've been accustomed to using youtube netflix and all of these platforms so the quality of product that they expect is top notch right i i'll just give you an example i have a i have a 2 year old niece um and she doesn't know how to read and write but she knows what's the youtube icon where to go to watch videos to surf through her favorite videos just by looking at the thumbnail and when she clicks on the thumbnail if an ad pops up she knows that this is not what i was looking for what was supposed to come she waits for 5 seconds to skip the ad she doesn't know that it's an ad and you can skip but she waits for 5 seconds she knows that something will uh will be here when the button will expand i'll have to click to watch my video so so that adoption to technology the tech savviness the ability to to learn right it's it's very fast with teenagers it's it's the habit building age so if you today if you today go and download snapchat you would find it super complicated you wouldn't understand what gives teenagers the kick to use it right but kids use it like right for uh, like left swipe right swipe they they just are very fast with it um so that's one of the like big re- big differences that teenagers are at their habit building age and while millennials aren't they are much more accustomed to uh being comfortable with their own lives and not adopting to things but teenagers adopt to things very faster um and second is like teenagers may not be the decision makers at home but they are the decision influencers so just look at ev- any purchase that that is made in home right be it a tv a car phone refrigerator or anything parents go to their kids and ask like which one to buy right 
it's the kid who's influencing those big purchases and all of those decisions even after not being the decision maker they are heavily the decision influencers because they go and research on which has the best specs which color should we buy the car for and con- like everything right so kids are essentially the ctos of the households um so if if it's anything that's related to tech um if 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 uh, my parents want to like just learn on how to forward a whatsapp message or how to set up a dp on facebook they just go to their kid and kid is helping them to learn those platforms um so what one interesting behavior that we've been seeing is that um we have a lot of grocery transactions happening through fanpay so what moms do is moms just fund their kids account and they just tell them okay you they might be sending lists on whatsapp or whatever and kids end up buying the whole grocery for the household because parents are too much intimidated by these platforms and with these apps that i don't want to use it and kids end up transacting right so that is uh, so those are the kind of things that we've been seeing very unique and uh, parents are just like kids were already doing all of these things like even my parents today no matter uh, if we are running a company or whatsoever my parents call me up and they are like book me a ticket right and i end up booking uh, their tickets right um so it's it's that behavior that teenagers were already transacting a lot but they did not ha- have access to paying independently and uh, after having fam pay uh, what's the typical you know uh, response of your users right when they first time see their first time getting this freedom is is this something which uh, uh they were expecting that this would happen or is it something which takes them off the roof it's it takes them off the roof actually it takes them off the roof if you get a chance after this podcast you should definitely go and check out our instagram and just look at the comments on our like any any of the posts right you'll see the kind of excitement that the kids have and the kind of uh, things that they say about fanpay and how it's adding value to their lives that is what uh, that is what is amazing we clearly see that enthusiasm of, in them on using the platform and uh, it's very fulfilling and some of can you share uh, what keeps you so sharp keeps you learning always right is it the books you read the people you interact with what you do it's is it's just that we are still students we we feel in our minds that we are still students and uh, that is what helps us uh, be unconventional because we are always curious we are always asking questions so whoever you are talking to definitely we speak to a lot of entrepreneurs uh, for if if there's anything that we are stuck at uh, we follow a lot of different entrepreneurs we like listen to podcasts like these different journeys and all of that but um i think what keeps us learning is is that um we we are not letting go of our student mindset um just to give you an example like um no one question that why do we need numbers to be on the card we just had the basic question that okay why do we need physical like why do we need numbers on the physical card because if the card gets lost uh you're going to end up losing so much of information to a stranger right um so we're like can we remove this and uh because anyway when i'm transacting online with the physical card i don't need numbers i just need my pin i'm i'm swiping the card and for shopping online i just need the numbers so we can push the numbers on the app that uh you can just open the app copy the number and do online transactions and for offline transactions you have your card um so just i think questioning the basic things helps us do unconventional things and the learning comes from just being curious about different things asking uh questions around thank you so much sambhav it was a pleasure to hear a very different very fresh perspective on how products are getting built right completely new which you know i have seen on this podcast and it's very fresh to see how how you thought on first principles to build for your users So thank you thank so you much so much for thank you so much for inviting me it was great chatting